I'm going to show how to tie my basic three-dimensional baitfish pattern. It was once christened Dodds's 3D Dodger by Mark Bowler, the esteemed editor of Fly Fishing and Fly Tying. I'll be perfectly honest, I'm uh, not sufficiently presumptuous to ever uh, give a fly a name, but this is the, the pattern that I use to, to catch probably 90% of my pike in the course of a year. Um, it's simple, it's robust, and it's effective. In addition to that, I'm going to show some variations and modifications to the, the basic design that mean that we can fish in all water conditions and at all depths of water. And it makes it a, a very versatile starting point for making specific patterns for specific waters. The hook that I'm going to use is a pretty big beast. It's a, a 401, no barb, quite fine in the wire, but good and strong. Um, I've never had one of these let me down. It's a, a partridge, ad swear, absolute pike fly hook designed by uh, a chap from Holland, Ad Swear, who was really at the forefront of fly fishing for pike. And as yet, I haven't found a hook that I like more than this one. I appreciate that it isn't perfect uh, because it's fine in the wire. It's got a, a degree of flex, and that makes some fishermen a little bit suspicious about how well it will hold. But whilst I've found there is that degree of flex, I've never had one straighten out. Um, they're my choice. Um, other people are allowed different ideas with that. The fact that it's barbless as well, I find it uh, convenient rather than having to, to pinch off barbs because I always fish barbless for pike. I'm going to start by uh, winding some thread along the hook shank to give me a, a base for my fly. And the thread that I'm using is Kevlar, which is used in the defense industry for making bulletproof jackets and the like. It's strong, which lets me pull hard and crank the fly together. I will confess that I now need to wear spectacles for this process. I'm going to take it, take the thread along the hook shank. I'm not too worried about the cost. I position it just with some loose turns and then start to, to tie it in hard. I'm using some, some frits. I'm just stripping the material off the flue, tie in the flue on the hook shank. Again, use a little dob of nail varnish to help keep it secure. Tie that in very securely, close, close, hard pulled down turns of the Kevlar. And then I'm going to take the Kevlar thread in a, a wider spiral, so as not to use too much of it, up to about the position where I'm going to start to form the head of my fly. Okay. And along the shank of the hook, then, I'm going to lay a bed of old nail varnish, because when I wind the fritz along the hook shank to form the, the underbody, it will then be secured. So if a pike's teeth snag through the flue of the finished fly, instead of it all unravelling, it should stay in reasonable order to catch, catch
much more pike. So now I'm going to take this fritz up along the hook shank and with this I'm always trying to use the minimum amount of material but at the same time get the largest appearance into my fly. Simply making a big fly by using lots of material makes it too bulky, too difficult to cast. So I wind it on. I'm just teasing the, the Fritz fibers back. Again, I'll strip a little bit of the fiber off the end of the flue. I'll tie in that flue. This is H2O slinky fiber. There are other materials that you could use, um, EP fibers, EP3D minnow fibers, all, all manner, but Again, this is my personal favourite because it's got enough movement to be appealing. On the other hand, it's not so limp that my fly collapses and doesn't look realistic in the water. Rather than tie in on the top of the hook shank, I'm going to tie in on the side of the hook shank. It's just position it with some quite loose turns and then I'm going to tie in on the other side of the shank to give a, a width to the fly so that if a pike views it from underneath it's going to look as if it's worth chasing. A lot of commercial pike flies are very two-dimensional. They look very good when viewed from the side but much, much less good when viewed from underneath. And often it's that view from underneath that's the first one that the pike has. So I want that to be appealing. Again, it's very tightly cranked together with the Kevlar. Let's snip off the excess. Take a, another bunch of fibers to, to match. I want the same, the same way to fly on the other side. We'll never get this uh, technically perfect. Probably a, a little bit of asymmetry is a good thing. Helps to give the fly some action in the water. So again, tying in on the other side, just a few loose turns to position the material. Tighter turns to hold it. Take off the excess. And again, look to incorporate some varnish into the tying. It's crucial that um, pike flies are, are well engineered, well constructed, because they're going to have to withstand an awful battering from the, the pike's highly impressive armory of teeth. The Kevlar thread, apart from just tying the fly together, is also starting to, to form the head of the fly. Okay. Now, I want my fly to have a taper towards the end and to be 
thinning out towards the end. There are two reasons for that. One is to get a, a realistic shape to my fishy fly, and the other is to get that nice, gentle movement in the fly that will make it look alive rather than like a, a big bunch of fluff on a hook being pulled through the water. And this is a, a blend of yellow and olive, which is called wild olive. Again, I'm going to tie that in on top of the hook shank. Gently to start with, just to hold it in position. And then more firmly. Let's take off that excess. These synthetic materials are quite savage on one's fly tying scissors. Perch, again, like most freshwater fish, has got a dark back. So I'm going to finish here by tying in some black slinky fibre over the top. There we go. Again, position with some loose turns. finish with some really hard, tight ones. Snip off the excess. Just tidy up those few straggly bits. Incorporate some varnish. Tidy up these few straggly bits. Not, don't need to be too fussy about that. Now I'm going to actually make the general shape of the head. Lots of good, firm turns. And building it up, just getting the shape. Now, out of the vise, if you look at it from underneath, you can see how that thinning process has actually given the fly some shape. That's going to look pretty good when viewed from underneath by a pike. 